everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Not Defining is a place where we delve into sexuality, gender, orientation, and much, much more to answer your questions so that you can find a place where you are feeling fulfilled and confident in yourself, no matter how you choose to identify. So on that topic today, we are talking about sexual fluidity. Now, sexual fluidity is where the person experiences some form of significant change in their orientation. Now, this is sometimes misunderstood to mean somebody who just has different preferences from time to time. Most people who identify as sexually fluid will experience significant changes in the actual fundamental gender or type of person that they are capable of being attracted to, okay? So the thing with sexual fluidity is that it's quite a diverse area. Some people are sexually fluid across their life, so they experience different changes maybe over the course of months or years. Some people are sexually fluid in the sense that they can change over the course of a day, back and forth. Yeah, their mind goes back and forth all the time. And other people will experience what we would term as episodes of sexual fluidity. So, for example, they might be, let's say, gay their whole life and stable in their orientation. And then at some point in their 20s, 30s, 40s, whatever it is, they will experience a shift. And it may shift permanently or it may shift and then go back. Or they may start to experience some element of sexual fluidity in their lives at some point. So it just basically means that you have a shift and you're not set and stable 100% of the time in your sexuality and it's completely valid and natural. Another way that people experience sexual fluidity is kind of within the subsections of their sexuality. So I'll explain what I mean. There might be somebody who is, let's say, heterosexual and heteroromantic, but they are also biromantic. So sometimes they can experience some romantic attraction to the same sex. They may experience sexual fluidity in the sense that that biromanticism comes and goes. So they're mostly heterosexual, but sometimes they have the capacity to feel romantic attraction to the same sex. And if it's changing, then that's fine. But their heterosexuality and their romantic attractions to the opposite sex remain the same. So there can be bits of your sexuality that can be fluid as well as your whole sexuality. Sexual fluidity is something that is found quite a lot in the bisexual and also the asexual community. The gay and straight community tend to be kind of more stable in the sense that you grow up, you find out what your sexuality is and it kind of stays that way. People on the multisexual, the asexual, or the aromantic spectrums can experience a lot of fluidity and a lot of bisexual people are fluid. So for example, it's a misconception that bisexual people just kind of like men and women, for example, and it's kind of 50-50 and they stay that way their whole life. Actually, many, many, if not most bisexual people will experience some element of fluidity where they will be more oriented towards women at one point, more oriented to men at another point, or more oriented towards different genders depending on the time. So bisexuality is a fluid orientation. Also asexual people, some of the time, you know, will go from, let's say, a sex repulsed asexual, so that's someone who just cannot even entertain the thought of having sex. And then over the course of their life, they may experience some form of demisexuality. So that's kind of, they may be able to have physical intimacy, but 
in certain situations and only when they have a specific bond. So asexual, bisexual people, pansexual people can experience this fluidity quite a lot. I identify as bi and I also identify as fluid. We must remember that sexual fluidity is not the same as gender fluidity. So gender fluid is a term that you might have heard of. That refers to somebody who has fluidity in their own gender. So the gender that they actually are in themselves. Sexually fluid is somebody who has fluidity in the gender that they are attracted or drawn to. Okay, so if you are sexually fluid, it doesn't mean that you're gender fluid and vice versa. You might be, but they are two separate things. And if somebody says, I'm fluid, maybe just check what they mean because they might mean gender or sexuality fluid. There are a couple of misconceptions I think that people have about people who are sexually fluid over and above just the normal kind of grief that all LGBT people get. Um, and one of them is people think that if you're sexually fluid, then you're just confused. And they'll say, oh, well, but you always had that kind of attraction, but you just didn't know it. Or, you know, you're just changing your preferences or, you know, you're kind of indecisive about what you want in life. That's a real, real misconception because many people are indecisive about that, what they want in life, who they want to date, who they want to be with. That has nothing to do with being sexually fluid. Being sexually fluid means that literally the gender or the, the type of people that you are capable of, of being connected to or oriented to shifts and changes. It is not something that you can control. It is something that you can come to understand in yourself and navigate, but it is absolutely not the same as being confused or indecisive. The other misconception that people have is that they will say, oh, well, you know, you're trying to change your sexuality, right? It's sexuality can't change. You know, you're born that way and it's set and you're, you are what you are. That's not true at all, um, as evidenced by the millions of sexually fluid people out there. But it is important to explain this difference. There are very, very horrible and stupid people out there who believe that homosexuality is wrong and they will try and change people's orientation through what they call therapy, which is actually kind of torture. Sexually fluid people are people who just naturally have some element of fluidity uh, in their natural orientation. So it's important if people are kind of saying to you like, oh, but you could be sexually fluid or, you know, we could kind of help you to, to, to become sexually fluid. Like, don't, don't believe that because that can be a mask for conservative or religious fanatics who are trying to change your orientation. So important to understand that distinction is also important to say that, you know, if you have other people from our community coming up to you and being like sexually fluid, like, you know, that doesn't exist. It does exist. Okay. So I didn't ask for it, but this is just the way I am. So don't ever apologize for your orientation changing or your, you know, anything like that. It's worth mentioning at this point that if you would like some help or if you're struggling with your orientation or you think you might be sexually fluid or you relate with anything in this video, then please drop me a comment. I will get back to everyone personally and please hit the subscribe button because it really helps us get this message out to people who need it. And I'm making lots more videos very, very soon. So you don't want to miss out. Finally, just a couple of difficulties that can come along with being sexually fluid. This is something that I've experienced myself. Mental health can be a real struggle because when your orientation is kind of changing and merging all the time, it can be really, really hard to feel stable. 
anyone who has known their orientation for their whole life, whether it's gay or straight or anything else, has a really big privilege, I think. When you're sexually fluid, it can be really confusing because it's like, okay, one day I like guys, one day I like girls, one day I like non-binary people, one day I like no one, one day I like everyone. And sometimes you can get to feeling like, am I ever gonna have a partner? You know, am I ever gonna find love? You know, am I ever gonna understand what is going on in my brain? Again, if you're suffering with that, just wanna let you know you're not alone. It's very, very natural. And if you'd like some support, come and speak to me. I'll be more than happy to help. I also have a video on obsessive thoughts about your sexuality, which can often affect people who are sexually fluid. So check that out. It should be popping up here. And the other difficulty that we can sometimes come up against with sexual fluidity is when you do have a partner, one partner, or one gender, it can be really difficult because often you can actually have a fluid episode and feel that you're oriented away from the gender of your partner. And this can bring up feelings of, gosh, I'm like betraying my partner. Like, what if I don't, you know, turn back? What if I never rediscover that attraction to my partner? Fluid episodes can be really, really scary, actually, particularly for people in relationships. The scariest ones of all can be those ones I talked about at the beginning of the video when you have had a stable sexuality for your whole life and then you suddenly have this fluid episode. Maybe you're married, maybe you have kids, maybe you've been with your partner for ages and suddenly you feel like you've lost your orientation towards your partner. This can be terrifying for people. So what I wanna say is you're not alone if this is happening. It's natural, don't worry. Write in the comments, I will get back to you. I coach and mental people through all of these kind of things. So please don't worry, you are not alone. But that is my little roundup of sexual fluidity. Please check out the Queer Spectrum podcast. I will put a link in the description below because I am having a fantastic conversation with Hanin Ali, who is a sexually fluid woman. And we're talking all about sexual fluidity from a male and a female perspective. So check that out. I think it's episode number 10 coming out. Other than that, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And I look forward to speaking with you soon. Thank you so much. Bye for now.